So in this War Thunder video, I want to go over some of the weak spots that at least I know on some of the tanks that are kind of strong within War Thunder. As of right now, we're just going to be going over Germany. We're going to be going through all the nations, but right now we are starting off with Germany. And for me at least, the vehicles I think are some of the toughest that you face within the German tech tree are stuff like the Hetzer, especially if you're facing it friendly. You also have the Elephant or the Ferdinand, which one you ever see in the battlefield. That one's also very tough to kill, especially if you're in a lower BR tank compared to it. And the only shots that you have are the frontal, you know, portion of the tank. You also have the Tiger H1. I don't particularly think it's a hard vehicle to kill, but if you have someone who is actually angling in the tank itself, it can be a little bit of a nuisance to actually kill the thing because of the weak spots that that thing actually has is kind of just kind of hidden. Now, whenever it comes to the rest of the tanks, they're kind of mean vehicles. You have the Broom Bar, which is a vehicle that for some reason takes over a low tier, but it's a vehicle that is easily killed if you know where to shoot it. And then for a funny, because it's a funny weak spot that actually no on the Tiger 105. We'll show that one off last. So our test vehicle today is going to be the M4A2 76W. The reason we're using this vehicle is because the 76mm is probably one of the most consistent guns that you'll find within this battle rating range. And also it's a very mid like gun in general. Like it's not going to be the greatest whenever it comes to pin. And if this gun is able to hit these weak spots and be able to go through them, majority of the other guns that you'll see with the War Thunder will also be able to go through these vehicles or, you know, kill the vehicles in general. So yeah, we're going to be doing the 76mm and our first target over here is a Hetzer. So the Hetzer is one of those vehicles that's kind of a meme vehicle. And what I mean by that is that it's very strong frontally, but as soon as you get on the side of it, it can be 50 cal to death. But the thing about it is, is that there's actually a way to kill this thing without just going through the transmission. And you know, you're around actually getting ate by the transmission is that you load HE. And I highly recommend whenever you're playing War Thunder, even if there is a, you know, target that you think is going to be, you know, very lightly armored is always to bring HE. And here's the thing. So, no, you can't pin anything like this, but because the Hetzer has the gun shield, you can just do this. It's crazy, right? It is It is extremely crazy that you can actually just kill a Hetzer with the 76 HE. And this goes for pretty much any HE that you can bring on. Once again, also, here's another tip that you can do. Let's just say the uh, Ferdinand's a different target. If you get on the side of one of these things and you have a 50 cal, you can just 50 cal to death. Or you can, like, you know, harm it enough to where it can't, like, pin you or anything. And then they'll say that you see this dude, you shoot him. So it's one of those things that you kind of just have to know about the Hetzer, and it is one of the most interesting things. So the next tank we have here on the firing line is the Ferdinand. This tank is kind of the same tank as a lot of other tanks within the game because it has the same hull as like the Porsche Tiger and also the Elephant. So this is kind of a weak spot guide for those vehicles as well because basically you engage those things the same way. Unless it's a Porsche Tiger, you can shoot for the Coppola, which is a completely different weak spot. Now for the 76 millimeter, this tank right here is pretty much a tough nut to crack like there isn't much that you can actually pin on this thing so if you're just directly on this tank i would definitely recommend just doing this shoot the gun out you know maybe it doesn't actually shoot it out and you have to do it twice but if like he's already shot once and he's having a reload just go ahead and shoot the gun out and then get on the side of the tank and you know get your kill now let's just say that the you know ferdinand player is trying to side scrape or he's trying to angle because as you know people learn how to angle with the tiger there's actually a weak spot on the Ferdinand on the hole, and this is on the Tiger Porsche as well, is that you can just shoot here and you can actually pin. So it doesn't do a ton of damage, but the whole point about it is, is that you're trying to mobility kill the thing. Because you can go for the tracks as well, but the thing about the tracks is, is that, well, for one, they still can move to have one track, and you're also having to put two rounds into something, like this one. So now it's mobility kill, but as you know, I just had to put two rounds in it, and I maybe could have got on the side and already killed it. But also you can do it on this side as well. It should get the driver on the right side especially and you're able to get on the side of it and you're able to just get this into like a two shot kill. So to be quite honest with you, the Tiger H1 and as well as just the Tiger 1 in general, for the 76 it's not really that much of an issue with the tank itself, but if you have stuff like the 75, you definitely can start to struggle if this thing starts to angle its tank and actually angle it to where you know it has more armor on the front. But as you can see right there, the 76 really doesn't have any tough work with this thing, but soon as you get an angle on this thing, which is about right in here. As you can see, it starts to yellow and starts to get some red portions as well. If you ever do get on an angle like this whenever it comes to a Tiger, it can be a hit or miss thing to actually pin this thing. I mean, like we can shoot there, it's going to not pin, but maybe it would pin if we keep shooting there again. So what I would do is definitely if they have to, you know, turret towards you, like this AI that I have right now is going to turn to turret. So like the shot would be easily right there. The number one thing that you can actually do is shoot the Coppola. 
the Capola shot is one of the most, you know, consistent shots. And let's go ahead and reset this Tiger so we have a full crew again. We can actually show it off, you know, a little bit better and also how much damage it will do. But the Capola shot is a very reliable shot to go after, even with stuff like the 75. As you see right there, we got Commander Gunner, which now means this thing is pretty much dead, you know, for a good, you know, 10 to 15 seconds maybe. And you just go on the side and you can shoot it. So the Tiger is definitely one of those vehicles that's going to be a little bit stronger if people know how to actually play the vehicle but overall if you're in a 76 sherman and he's just facing you just shoot towards the middle don't hit the driver's hatch and you will be good but yeah the capola on top this one is actually a really good weak spot to go after and it can kill pretty much the whole entire turret crew the only thing about it is, is this only goes for the porsche tiger and as well as the tiger h1 the tiger e sadly does get rid of this weak spot so you're not able to actually hit it like you can on this one so the next tank that we have here is actually a really meme of a tank. So it's the Broom Bar. So the Broom Bar is one of those tanks at lower tiers that can be a huge menace, especially if you have someone that's like playing it a ton and they kind of know what they're doing. With the 76 millimeter, it is a little bit of a tough target. I mean, as you can see right there, it really can't pin the front, basically point blank range. But the thing about it is, is that you never want to shoot in this area. You just want to go down, go below the driver's hatch, and it's pretty much a one shot kill every time. The Broom Bar has like no armor whenever it comes to this plate right here. Now I'll actually show it on screen of how much that plate actually is, and you can actually get it with a lot of different you know, vehicles within the game. So the last tank that we have here is the wonderful Tiger II. Now this is not the regular Tiger II that you'll see. This is the Tiger II 105, which means that it's a little bit different compared to the Tiger II. And whenever you're playing a vehicle like this, which has just got a 76, it is a really tough nut to crack whenever it comes to actually killing this thing. Now, as of always, just go for the MG port right there. We're not going to shoot it now because this one doesn't respawn because it didn't hit that one to actually do it. But as you know, if you're in the front of a Tiger like this and you just have the opportunity, just shoot out the gun. It is the biggest way to actually get a kill on the Tiger II H. But the funny thing is, is that the differences of the Tiger II 105 and the Tiger II H in general makes it to where it's a little bit more balanced, funny enough, to a 76. So you see these things that are sticking out on the side of the Tiger II right here. Now these are range finding units. So the, this side ha or this tank has them on both sides. But the funny thing about it is, is if you aim for the scope right there, you can actually pin. Yes, so you can actually pin the turret crew and actually, you know, kill some of them inside of the tank. It's really kind of funny that a vehicle which is completely fake has a better weak spots than the, the one in the tech tree. But as you know, if you ever see this in the front, definitely just go for the MG port right there and you maybe will get something. But with the 76, I would just recommend going after a gun, killing the gun, get on the side, and just shoot it and get an easy kill. So in this fourth in video, we're now going to go over the section for the American tech tree whenever it comes to vehicles. I think they're kind of hard to kill whenever it comes to the American tech tree. As you can see right here, we have stuff like a M60. We also have an M48, which is sitting beside it. The M48 is not a hard vehicle to kill. I just want to kind of prove something with it. We also have the Jumbo 76, and then we have a T95 and a T14. All these vehicles are kind of iffy whenever it comes to the game itself to actually kill them especially if you do not have the right type of equipment now for the m60 the m60 is very interesting because it has a weak spot that i think people know about but they don't know how it kind of works so the m60 has the cupola as everyone knows this is the meme spot to actually kill an m60 as you can see right here even the porsche tiger can kill the thing which is super easy to actually do you also have the turret uh, right here which you can shoot at which will also kill the tank as well but the thing about it is, is that if you have APHE, and especially this goes for vehicles that are like SPAs, you know, ZSU-57, the um, Gepard, all these vehicles can just shoot there and get easy kills. Now, the thing about it is, is that the M48 is basically the same thing. You can shoot for the Coppola, but for some reason, it doesn't really like the fuse APHE. As you can see right there, all we killed was the commander, and that's because he was just sitting there. So... Yes, you, while you can shoot the Coppola of an M48, it sadly just does not fuse APHE like the M60 does. So it is a weak spot that you can go for, but at the same time, it's not a huge weak spot that I would rely on actually doing anything whenever it comes to the vehicle itself. Uh, most of the time, you'll have like the long 88, which easily should be able to pin around the area, and it should always be an easy kill. So the next vehicle on our list here is the good old Jumbo 76, and as well as just Jumbos in general. Their armor is pretty tough for what it is. You know, the turret is going to be something that pretty much just bounces everything that you hit at it. The hull as well is going to be something that pretty much just bounces everything. Except for if you start to get into the bigger guns like the Long 88 or even the 75. 
But the 88mm on a Tiger, for example, really the only spot that you have is you can go for the gun, like always, but you have to just go for this spot. You have to go for the wonderful gun port. Now, the thing about it is, is that, once again, people use bushes, people use things to actually, you know, hide that weak spot whenever it comes to the jumbo. So it definitely is something to actually wonder of, should I just go ahead and shoot the gun barrel out? Because, as you know, shooting gun barrel out like this is one of the easiest ways to just get on the side of a target and actually kill them. Now, another hidden kind of feature with the jumbo that people don't really know about is like, let's just say that you have this area of the jumbo that you can actually see. If the jumbo is angled any, like I'm talking about any, you can actually pin right there. It's a spot that people don't actually realize that they can actually do. If it is angled any at all, this can actually pin, which is just crazy to me. The majority of the time, it is a one shot. So the next vehicle on our list here is the T95. The T95 is one of those vehicles that's very, very huge. It's very slow. It's very menacing whenever it's going around a battlefield. But even with like a Porsche Tiger, you don't have to worry about it because of the Coppolas. As you can see here, the Coppola shots are not the best in the world, but even with a tank like this, you can still pin it and be able to at least get some of the crew out. As you can see right there, we got the commander with that one. We got the driver on the other side, and then you would actually be able to go around the vehicle itself and be able to pin it. The only problem is, is like, as you can see right here, the T95 is pretty tough. Uh, there's really nothing that we can pin on it. So majority of the time, your shots would just have to be for the Coppola, especially if you're running a gun, which isn't the best in War Thunder. Now for our final tank here, whenever it comes to this American guide, is a vehicle that I really like to say is a vehicle that's very overestimated for what it is, which is the T14. The T14, whenever it gets up to here to like where it has to face stuff like Tigers and as well as Panthers, it is a meme. It basically can't really do much, but whenever it's facing guns like the 50mm or like the Puma or on some of the Panzer 3s, it can be a huge menace whenever it comes to those sort of vehicles because as you can see right here, it basically cannot be pinned up from the front whenever it comes to its lower plate. Now there's two weak spots that you can actually go for whenever it comes to this vehicle. One is right here where you can shoot through the gun or the little gun port and actually go into the tank itself. But for me at least, one of my favorite weak spots is just the side of the turret. And it should be an easy kill whenever it comes to the T-14s. So when we're doing a Russian portion of this video, I want to do it in a 75 Sherman just because I feel like the 75 is something that should be able to do both of these weak spots. And this is not a video of basically just talking about where to shoot tanks. It's mainly on weak spots that many people don't know about. So for me at least, the only two that I at least know of right now is one for an IS-2 and then the KV-1E or the KV-1B or even just KVs in general because KVs are some of the most notorious things whenever it comes to around the 4.0 BR bracket of War Thunder. So the thing that you can do with KVs is if they don't have any bushes on them or someone's not bushed the thing completely to high hell, you can just go for this shot right there, which is the driver's port, which basically will kill the tank every single time that you shoot it. Now you do have two other spots because as you know, people will just bush this area up. You can go for this one right here, which is kind of a hard one to actually hit because of the fact that if you go just a little bit more to the right, you have the chance of a non-pen, which is one of those things that's kind of you know, interesting to do. So definitely we'll go for this area right in here, which is the turret ring, and it should give you a pretty good hit. But once again, people are going to have this tank bushed up. So there's two other spots that you can actually go for, which is this thing right here. It sometimes will do damage, but sometimes it will not. It's not a hugely reliable area to actually kill the tank itself. As you see, we're just orange in the crew there. But there's one that's kind of funny to actually go for, and it's this one right here. You can actually shoot a KV right there and it will pretty much kill it every single time. I mean, you will get hit markers like that one, but the turret crew is basically dead because we hit in that area right there, which is pretty cool in my opinion. The KV is one of those very hard tanks to actually kill, has really good armor, but if you know where to, you know, hit the tank, it can do, you know, not a huge amount of stuff. It, it basically just goes on the premise of people don't really know how to engage the thing which, in my opinion, is kind of a bad thing. All right, so now we're in the T20 because the IS-2's weak spot is a funny one because I think it's really important to actually know this because people play the IS-2's insanely differently depending on the skill level of the player. Some people like to just play like this where they're completely, you know, friendly facing you. The only problem is, is like long 88s and stuff like that to easily be able to pin you. But the thing about it is, is for the IS-2, there's two things that you know about it. It has a really long reload, so that's one thing that you need to capitalize on whenever this tank actually fires its gun. And also, people like to play this thing backwards. And the reason people like to play this thing backwards is because the angle 
on the back of the tank is actually a huge amount so like let's say for example I shoot this tank right there as you can see it it basically bounces and even if I pin the tank I mean even all the way up through there it completely cannot be you know, killed I get like a radiator so there's really nothing that like I can pin on whenever it comes to someone playing this thing backwardsly now the thing that people kind of forget about is that it has a cupola the cupola is up here so this means you can just do that and the uh, kill count's a little bit weird but yeah as you can see you can just do that and it's pretty much an easy kill every single time with when, when it comes to at least a 76 and if you're able to get the cupola i know some people like to bush the thing up but if you can get it you know to where you can actually see it it is a huge and easy kill for the is2 so we have two more nations that i think that's actually worth covering whenever it comes to like weak spots that you should know and that is the uk and as well as france with the amx 50 fosh now the tortoise is an interesting like a little vehicle because majority of the time people are very scared of it because no one really plays the thing so no one knows where to shoot it but even with a simple 76 millimeter if you're very close to a tank it's going to take a little bit more to do but you can just pin it right there which is uh, crazy to actually think about that you can do now if you have something like an 88 you can pin right here and it would be able to go through as well but even something like this like if you're just like in in the like battlefields with like a tortoise and you're in like a jumbo 76 if you just know to aim to the left of the machine gun port it will most likely kill the tank outright now the churchill is an interesting one because it really determines your tank's height if you'll actually be able to use this weak spot so the weak spot of this thing is definitely to shoot for this thing you'll be able to kill it every single time but there's this weird weak spot that you can actually abuse if your tank is tall enough and that's the above part up here as you can see right here with the arcade aim marker there really isn't much that's going to show me a green marker i do believe like a can maybe get a sliver like right here or something and it'll be able to kill the loader but overall like i would be better off going to another thing but let's change vehicles and let's show you guys something real quick so now we're in the M6. Now also you gotta note that your elevation might also give you this ability to shoot the Churchill Mark 7 in this uh, top portion. But the M6 is actually a tank that is tall enough to actually abuse this spot where you're actually able to kill a Churchill from just the front. I mean like yes you do have other spots you can go for but the most reliable one especially if I know that my tank is tall enough to actually do this is just go for that because if we ever look at this play in the asset viewer this plate is only about 20 millimeters thick, so you're able to actually go through it majority of the time, as you can see we ricochet there. But majority of the time, if you're shooting it straight on, you'll be able to, you know, pin it. As you can see, we're kind of messing up right now. But it is a huge weak spot to just know, because I have seen before where Churchills get that machine gun port, like, hold down. And there's nothing you can really do to them except for maybe shoot uh, this weak spot right there, which is always just something to mentally note at the end of the day of things. So the last vehicle that we have on the list is the good old Fosh. The Fosh is a funny one because the side armor is basically nothing. If you can get on the side of these things, they're basically just dead. But if you ever meet one of these things from the front, they're very hard to pin. There's very little things that can actually pin these. If you have APFSDS, they can go through it. If you have APDS or HEATFS, you can go through it. But the frontal portion of this is pretty much immune to anything that's not those rounds. So the only way that you really have to actually kill this thing is for one, you can shoot there and it can uh, you know, fuse and kill everything. Or there's another spot just below the rangefinder that can actually shoot as well and it can kill it as well. So hopefully you guys do enjoy this type of video. It is going through all the weak spots that I know of that are for very rough vehicles within a game to kill. And hopefully you guys get some knowledge out of this and use it in your battles in War Thunder. So everyone has a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in the next War Thunder video.